sponsored by Brilliant. Five years ago today, I was standing with Jim Dalrymple of The Loop at the Palo Alto Apple Store when the Apple Watch first went on sale. There was a crowd of people at the door lined up for hours and around the block. Most of them had seen the original announcement the September before when Tim Cook had taken the stage at the historic Flint Center in Cupertino for his first big one more thing. <laughs> and again in March of 2015 at the Yerba Buena Center in San Francisco. Many had even come to the try-ons where they could see the different casings and band collections. They were ready. When it opened, Jim and I watched everyone watching all the watches until Tim Cook appeared and asked us which Apple Watch bands were our favorites. Yeah, this is gonna be a very different kind of video because I really like the Apple Watch. It has flaws and limitations, I know, but it's also not just the most personal device Apple has ever made. It's absolutely the most important. Here's how and why. I'm Renee Ritchie and this is Apple Watch five years later. When I first heard rumblings of an Apple Watch, Almost immediately, I thought its killer feature would have to be convenience. That just like clocks had moved from town squares to living rooms to pockets to wrists, computers would move from mainframes to PCs to phones to watches. Or even like the Enterprise or Galactica had shuttles or Vipers. Or I love and still love geeky analogies. Regardless, the smaller doesn't have to be able to do as much as the bigger if it is able to do certain key important things with far greater convenience. And for me, for the watch, back then, before I'd ever laid hands or eyes on it, that meant logging health and fitness data, authenticating me for things like mobile payments, alerting me to priority notifications, and letting me control all the accessories in my home or life. There was so much noise at the time, you had quote unquote analysts saying that if Apple didn't hurry up and announce a watch, they'd be doomed. And quote unquote pundits saying if Apple did announce a watch, it would fail and they'd likewise be doomed. Doomed if you do, <laughs> doomed if you don't. Just so much noise. But from the moment Tim Cook, Jeff Williams, Kevin Lynch, and Johnny Ive announced it, it was obvious to everyone paying attention that the Apple Watch was going to be as transformative as every major Apple product before it. Maybe even more. Yes, the messaging wasn't as concise as previous products, and things like the various communication options, from taps to heartbeats to sketches, were overly complex. Yes, the app experience, while there, wasn't great yet. Yes, some people had to get over the idea of charging a watch every night the way they'd gotten over charging a phone. Yes, they also had to get over the Apple Watch being more rectangular, like a computer, not round, like a dial. Just like they'd gotten over cell phones being slabs and no longer banana shaped like Ma Bell. Yes, the 18 karat gold editions were just a lot, a lot. And absolutely, back then, long before Always On, you couldn't even glance at the time on a watch whose titular feature is telling time. Also, the S1 system and package that powers it. It's no secret I think Apple's silicon team is the unsung hero of the last decade for what they've managed to ship from the original iPad to the iPhone 11. But in an industry where the norm, even now, is twice rehashed old phone chips, what Apple managed to do with custom silicon on the wrist has been every bit as impressive, even if that first one felt like it was always running at the thermal limits of that casing. Previously, Apple had a decade of smartphones and tablet PCs to observe, to analyze, to figure out which problems still needed solving, and then to solve them. The computer watch, though, was barely half that old. If Apple didn't want to wait several more years to launch, they had to do something rare for the company, become part of the public learning process. So yes, it was messy in so many ways, like fuzzy logic not quite yet zeroed in on its target, but it was also hella exciting to be in on it, to get to see Apple for once have to figure something out. And some parts, well, some parts, Apple just absolutely nailed on day one. Things like health and fitness with activities, rings, and workouts. Authentication with Apple Pay, which ingeniously used the constant connection to our heart rates. On notifications, including preserving privacy at a glance. And on control, being tied into everything from HomeKit to Apple TV to the camera app on the iPhone. Everything I kinda always said I wanted. Also, the hardware, like Force Touch and the Taptic Engine, the digital crown, the optical and now electrical heart rate monitor. More than that though, 
Apple came up with a simple, easy method for swapping watch bands and even sizing link bracelets that made every traditional watchmaker who'd spent the last century not coming up with it literally look like they'd been frozen in time. Yeah, exactly that kind of meaningful innovation. Then came Apple Watch Hermes. That was over the top, but in such a better way than the gold edition and sort of perfectly capped the juxtaposition of cutting edge technology and traditional fashion. I may have bought way, way, way too many of those. But people just don't wear watches anymore. People won't wanna upgrade their watches every few years. There's no way anyone would choose an Apple Watch over a fitness band with longer battery life or a traditional watch that could be passed down to generations. The coverage was just so bizarre at the beginning. What I remember is getting my Apple Watch review unit a day or two before the launch, staying up overnight to push out a dozen how-to videos, spending the next week writing a 17,000 word review. And no, that's not a verbal typo. Maybe Apple had it nailed everything immediately, but I hadn't worn a watch in years, in decades, since my calculator watch in high school. And I knew, I just knew that from then on, I'd be wearing one every day. And I have. And on those rare occasions where I forget to charge it or I forget my charger and it runs out of power, my wrist feels however less than naked feels. Because it's become such a constant part of my life, not just to track my walks, but to give me directions because I get lost so easily and always, to pay for almost everything because tap to pay has just been ubiquitous where I live since the watch was launched, to let me know when the most important people in my life are trying to contact me and to help me take better care of my life. The original Apple Watch did more than the original iPhone out of the gate, but, just like the original iPhone, there were obvious areas it still had to address. Getting app logic and an app store on device, adding GPS and cellular networking, water resistance and swim proofing, continuing the war on bezels by pushing the display out further towards the edges, figuring out always on for that display. It was clear though, with that original watch, that Apple was pushing up against the limits of miniaturized mobile technology, hard but it was just as clear that they were also pushing those limits and in ways that weren't just obvious, but also surprising. In 2016, we got the Apple Watch Series 2, which added breathing, so important to fitness, but also accessibility with wheelchair workouts and social with activity sharing. There was GPS and swim proofing, a brighter display and a dual core S2 chipset, but there was also the Nike Plus partnership, which furthered both fitness and fashion and has become what I consider to be the go-to Apple Watch for everyone. And there was white ceramic, which let Apple play with material sciences in a way that wasn't as over the top as gold, but maybe even more appealing to hardcore watch lovers. There was also the Series 1, which sped up the original Apple Watch at a price point that was even more affordable. And then there was emergency SOS and medical ID, which began Apple Watch down the path of becoming what I think makes it Apple's most important product, and arguably the most important product in the history of consumer electronics its ability to save lives. See, Apple added a heart rate sensor to the original watch just to get an accurate calorie reading for workouts. But when it comes to this stuff, Apple really does think different. There were some weird reports early on about Apple not consulting outside experts on Apple Watch features. But the way Apple works is to bring those experts inside. Consultants don't have any real skin in the game. They don't have to ship. So when you look at who runs health at Apple, from the VP of health, Sumble Desai, on down, you see practicing doctors, and you see coaches like Senior Director of Fitness, Jay Blonick, who I'm guessing, even right now, is still running laps around South Bay. On your left, on your left. And it's because Apple heard from customers, saw potential, and began building out things like high, low, and irregular heart rate notifications, the ECG app, fall detection, and international SOS. In 2017, Series 3 added LTE, the S2 and W2 chipsets, activity coaching, gym kit, and gray ceramics. In 2018, Series 4 made the displays bigger, more edge to edge, took the S4 seamlessly to 64-bit, wireless to the W3, added yoga, walkie-talkie, and gold steel. In 2019, Series 5 added the always-on display, on-device app store, digital compass, and titanium. Last year, Apple also reintroduced the Series 3 at just $199, making it one of the best deals in tech and opening up Apple Watch functionality to a much larger market, everyone who hadn't even tried an Apple Watch yet. And updates to watchOS, which runs Apple Watch the way iOS runs the iPhone, 
meant that the vast majority of the new software features also came to existing Apple Watch owners. Because, turns out, it wasn't just a watch you had to upgrade every few years. It was a watch that got updates every year. Each new version also brought with them better heart rate data and wider notifications, cycle tracking, the noise app, research studies, and more, in ways that respected security and privacy, but also took into account when that privacy needed to be extended to primary care physicians, medical records, those research studies, and other areas that, with consent, always and absolutely, really truly make a difference to people, especially those who need those features the most. Over time, slowly but steadily, we began to hear about people using the Apple Watch to call for help when they were lost or in danger, or in accidents or fell down and couldn't reach their phones, or to discover serious heart conditions, no device that literally wasn't always being worn, monitoring, would ever detect, both on the news and in our everyday lives. And just as slowly but steadily, all the bizarre business pub coverage that had insisted on calling the Apple Watch beleaguered, troubled, that said modern Apple just couldn't get another hit, that ignored it outselling media darlings like the Amazon Echo, literally every traditional watch ever made, and becoming a booming, multi-billion dollar business that like the iPod for music players and the iPad for tablets pretty much is the business. Even those pubs and those pundits, their doomsaying just wrecked and strewn across the internet. Even they have been forced to admit what everyone else has known for years, that the Apple Watch isn't just a hit product, it's a transformative one. And yeah, totally told you so. Late last year, I named the Apple Watch my product of the decade, and I stand firmly, enthusiastically behind that. Sure, I can't do as much with it as I can with my iPad or MacBook Air or any of the iPhones that have come out since but I can do those brief, frequent, critical things with far greater convenience and far less interruption into my daily life. The latest Apple Watch Series 5 even fixed my biggest gripe about the product. Thanks to the always-on display, I can now finally, fully use the Apple Watch as a watch. But really, thanks to complications as the dashboard into my day, every day. And even though it feels like Apple has been knocking down my missing feature wish list each year, every year, systematically, Maybe even methodically, there are still things I want my Apple Watch to do that it still can't do. Like sleep tracking, so Apple can do for rest what they've done for activity and provide some kind of ultra low power mode and rapid recharging to make it not just functional, but feasible to get that even more encompassing holistic view. To allow for even more customization of watch faces, even if it's just the photo face with a full complement of infograph style complications, so we can truly make our most personal device truly personal. To go iPhone free the way the iPhone went PC free with iOS 5, with its own independent data connection, and as an independent device for people who want exactly that kind of independent device. And to connect up everything that's come before so that I can walk into a clinic or get picked up by emergency services anywhere in the world, tap my Apple Watch, provide consent, and have all my medical history and health records instantly available to the responders and doctors who need it, as easily as I can badge in transit and Apple Pay today. Tim Cook has said numerous times that we will look back and say, Apple's greatest contribution to mankind has been in healthcare. I think that's true. And I think we'll look back and see that Apple Watch was the launching point for all of it. So here's to an amazing first five years. I can't wait to see what comes with the next five. And if you wanna be part of it, Brilliant has this new Introduction to Neural Networks course, the kind that lets computers program themselves in ways that allows for everything from Face ID to fall detection. For example, you can wire up just 50 neurons and using that type of feedback, build a network that's capable of classifying handwritten digits. Now extrapolate that to security, privacy, health, fitness, everything, and you can see how it's the foundation of what comes next. And that's true whether you're a student looking to get ahead while school's out, a professional who wants to brush up on the latest and most important topics, or you just wanna learn how it all works. For all that and more, go to brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie and sign up for free. Be one of the first 200 people, and you can also level up with 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thanks, Brilliant. Thanks to all of you for your support. Okay, so if I just sounded way too hyped, it's because I'm exactly that level of hyped. 
Yes, the Apple Watch still has flaws. I spent the better part of the last five years pointing out those flaws, and most of them at least have been fixed. The bottom line for me remains that the Apple Watch doesn't just improve lives, it saves them, and everything else is just noise. At least, that's what I think. Now, hit like, subscribe if you haven't already, ring that bell gizmo so YouTube will actually tell you when new shows go live, and then hit up the comments and let me know what do you think about the Apple Watch five years later. Thanks for watching, and if you go right here, you can check out my look back at the last six months of Apple Watch 11 as well.